Once, when I was little, I heard that bows could swallow a whole elephant. The image had stayed with me all day, and I decided to draw it. All the grown-ups were telling me the same thing. The hat looks great. They didn't understand. They just kept telling me to do something with myself, like study geography or maths. I took their advice and became an aviator, a job that allowed me to travel the planet and live the life the way they've always wanted me to. I've been living in an adult's world for several years now, but I have never felt comfortable. I felt sad and frustrated. I've always been the weird one in a world where everyone was alike. One day, while I was flying over the desert, my plane had an engine problem and it fell on the ground. It was just the dunes and myself, surrounded by a sea of silence. If I couldn't manage to take off, I wouldn't survive. All of a sudden, a little blue-eyed boy appeared in front of my very eyes. He was the little prince. Can you paint a lamb for me? I looked for the color markers in my backpack and I drew the three lamps. But he didn't like any of them. One was old and the other was ill-looking or too thin. I was tired of him insisting so much that I drew a box reassuring him that the lamb he wanted was in there. Oh, that's exactly what I wanted. The little prince lived on a small, far away planet. There were volcanoes on this planet, and the land was covered with enormous baobab trees. The little prince liked watching the sunsets very much. He knew how to enjoy the little things in life. He paid attention to the small details and to all those moments, invisible to adult eyes. He told me that there existed two types of plants on every planet. Good plants and bad plants. Bad plants should be ripped out immediately because their huge roots could make a small planet like this one explode. Why do roses have thorns? The little prince asked me one day. So that animals won't eat them, I replied. But they eat them anyway. In that case, I don't know. I've got important things to do. We're lost in the desert. And if I don't fix my plane, we'll die. Important things? Roses have had thorns for millions of years. Don't you think it's important to ask you about them? I went closer and I gave him a hug. He was right. In the adult world, important things are numbers or doing business. People don't appreciate the small details in the world around us. Unique flowers grew on the little prince's planet, flowers that only lived one day. But one day, a different flower grew on the planet. It was incredibly beautiful and a little selfish. Besides, the flower thought it was invincible because it had four thorns. It was a vain flower and always demanded the little prince's attention. That flower gave my life meaning. I should have never run away, but I was too young for love. The little prince was talking about the day he said goodbye to his flower to set off on his journey around several planets. I love you. You have decided to leave, so do it and try to be happy. I'll be okay. I have four thorns to defend myself. The first planet the little prince visited was ruled by a king. My first subject, exclaimed the king when he saw him. The little prince was confused to hear him say that. The king explained that all the universe had to obey him. And you can demand anything you want? Asked the little prince. No, one should always demand what people are able to do. I think there's nothing for me to do here. I have to go. The king tried to hold back the little prince in every possible way. He even named him minister of the realm. Nothing could change his mind. He had to continue with his journey and no king's authority could stop him. He kept thinking, adult people are so weird. On the next planet lived the vain person. Oh, an admirer, said the vain man. Start applauding me till I tell you to stop.
After applauding for a while, the little prince got tired and stopped. You admire me very much, don't you? What does it mean to admire someone? To admire someone is the same as admitting that I am the prettiest, the most intelligent, and the best person on this planet. But you are the only one on this planet. Why do you want people to admire you? The little prince was definitely realizing that older people were very weird. What they did made no sense. The little prince told me that the third planet was inhabited by a businessman. He was as red as a tomato, and he did calculations all the time. Two million. Next month I'll earn double. Two million what? Stars. I'll have two million stars. And what do you do with two million stars? I count them and I put them in the bank. But that's pointless. You're not useful to them. The little prince left, thinking again how very weird older people are. The fourth planet was small. There was only one lamp post and a lamp lighter. Why do you turn the lamp on and off all the time? It's my duty. I have to turn the lamp post on at night and turn it off in the morning. But now that the planet is smaller, the sun sets every five minutes. And your job has always been the same? Yes. The planet has changed, but my job stayed the same. I have no time to rest, even though my job is what I like the most. The little prince thought that the lamplighter was the least absurd of all other people. He had a job, and he worried about something else aside himself. Be that as it may, he only thought about doing his duty. The last planet he visited was the biggest one and was inhabited by an old man who was a geographer and knew where the oceans, the mountains, and the deserts were. So, are there many seas on your planet? I don't know. I'm a geographer, not an explorer. I count on the explorers to inform me about everything they see. Do you also know about flowers? They are the prettiest thing on my planet. No, I'm not interested in flowers because they decay fast and disappear. I like mountains better because they never change. At that very moment, the little prince regretted having left his flower alone. One day, the flower would disappear too. Finally, the little prince arrived on Earth. Seven million people lived on that planet. Among them, there were lamplighters and thousands of vain people. When the little prince got there, he saw a field of roses that reminded him of his flower. Then he came across a very beautiful animal. Who are you? You look very pretty. I'm a fox. Come play with me. I'm very sad. I can't. I'm not domesticated. What does it mean to be domesticated? It means to have a bond with someone. To me, you're just another boy, and I don't need you for anything. But if you domesticate me, we'll grow fond of each other, and we'll end up needing one another. I want you to domesticate me. You should be very patient with me. At first, you'll feel distant, but little by little, we'll get closer. The little prince understood what the fox was saying, and started domesticating it little by little. He visited the fox every day and played with it. Till one day, they had to say goodbye. I'm going to cry. Go have a look at the field of roses. Then come back and I'll tell you a secret. The little prince did exactly what the fox asked him to. And he realized that contrary to the rest of the roses, his rose was unique and special because the flower had been domesticated by him and he by the flower. The rest of the roses were beautiful, but they were meaningless. What really matters is invisible to the eyes, told him the fox before saying goodbye. Come on, let's look for a well. A well? We're in the desert. But the little prince wouldn't give up. If he wanted something, he would get it. What really makes the desert more beautiful is the well underground. What makes something beautiful is invisible to the eyes. The little prince had fallen asleep and I kept walking holding him in my arms as if he were a treasure. It was then when we found the well and drank from it. It seemed that water sprung as a reward from walking under the stars and all our hard efforts. It was a gift from the heart, like when I used to look at Christmas lights as a kid.
The little prince was near the well, and I went closer to see him. When I got there, I saw him talking to a snake. It looked very dangerous. He was pale as snow. He looked at me, and then I understood everything. I fixed my plane. I'm glad. I'm going back home too. Although my journey is much longer and more complicated. We were standing in a desert in daylight, but I felt frozen. I couldn't believe I'd never hear his laughter again. Tell me this is all a bad dream. I don't want you to go. Let me set off on this journey alone. All of a sudden, there was a lightning, and the little prince fell on the desert sand. Many years had gone by. I knew that the little prince went back to his planet because on the next morning, his little body wasn't there. To me, Sahara Desert is the most beautiful and saddest place in the world. It was there where I first saw the little prince, and it was also there where he disappeared. If you ever find yourselves there, don't rush away. Enjoy the sights. Never lose the kid you have inside, because what's really beautiful is invisible to the eyes, and only kids are able to see with their heart. Subscribe to our Smile and Learn channel. Click on the seal and stay updated with new adventures.